Twenty years ago, there was a popular saying in China in the e-commerce industry: "There is nothing that can't be sold." Yet today, twenty years later, e-commerce has become the most difficult business to do. Girl Kayla is a taboo online store with 5.5 million fans that sells women's clothing. Recently, its warehouse was suddenly emptied and the store disappeared. It ran away with 4.84 million in cash, involving more than 300 suppliers. Many of the clothes purchased by customers weren't shipped. What's odd is that even its customer service and live streamers who showcased merchandise didn't know that the owner had run away, and they were shocked to learn about it from their fans. A video has been circulating online. An anchor woman was live streaming for Girl Kayla, showcasing clothing. The next second, police came through the door, and the anchor woman looked very surprised. 下一秒还在不幸，非常敬业的还在直播。然后就彻底蒙住了。Careful netizens discovered that Girl Kayla's runaway didn't happen on a whim. As early as March, the company was canceled, and it purchased goods at a price of U.S. four dollars and ten cents per piece, but sold them at a loss of four dollars per piece. And use the money earned from the next batch to pay for one batch of goods. Through this rolling method, it quietly ran away with four million eight hundred and forty thousand in accounts payable, keeping even its own staff and customer service in the dark. Coincidentally, the T-Mall store Yuvenart Home Furnishings, with annual sales of one hundred and thirty-seven point eight million yuan, suffered a rapid deterioration in operations due to a broken capital chain and a concentrated run by creditors. At present, the company's team has been disbanded, and the store has reported closure to Tmall. MJ Style, a local fast fashion brand with four million fans on Tmall, is also rumored to be bankrupt. Industry insiders reveal that the first wave of China's e-commerce outfits closing down has begun, and people would see many more e-commerce companies close later. Having done seven years of e-commerce, Mr. Wu said that this year, 99% of live merchants will close. Why? The development of all e-commerce platforms was similar in the early stages, but now the platforms generally begin to support unreasonable refunds and price wars. To make it easier for consumers to use their services, many platforms, when faced with unreasonable requests for refunds, usually ignore the merchant's input and dictate the refund. Yesterday, I saw a nonsensical demand for a refund. A buyer said the merchant didn't call him daddy, and he was short of a son, so he was angry and wanted a refund. The most ridiculous thing is, is that the platform intervened and agreed to the buyer's refund request. At the same time, a lot of large live streaming industrial parks are holding on by a thread. Donghai Live E-Commerce Industrial Park was established in 2020. With the rise of e-commerce, it has become the base for live streaming and cross-border e-commerce, including more than 80 e-commerce talents, 164 live streaming hosts, and 30 e-commerce enterprises in the park. But the park is declining. A netizen posted a video saying that many of the live streaming businesses in the park have closed down. It's also revealed that a large number of live streamers in Beijing and Hangzhou no longer have jobs. TV shopping host Meng He disclosed that e-commerce live streaming businesses are closing in large numbers. There are now more than 60 live streaming related entrepreneurial parks in Hangzhou. They are beautifully designed with an artistic touch, but the vacancy rate is as high as 50% and up, and the leasing prices have fallen again and again. A large number of live streamers in Hangzhou are now unemployed, and pay cuts are common. According to him, this phenomena appears not only in Hangzhou but also in other cities. Live streamers in Beijing, Shenzhen, Guangzhou, and Shanghai are shrinking in large numbers, and many have chosen to go back to their hometown. The main reason is the golden age of live streaming is over, and things are going downhill. A woman who used to be a live streamer shared her personal experience.
How did I go from earning sixty thousand nine hundred dollars a month to being unemployed? Last October, I was still netting sixty eight thousand nine hundred dollars a month, but this year I have been unemployed and at home for five months. To summarize, I probably missed the opportunity and didn't work hard when the time was good. Live streaming is a volatile business. You never know when the platform will fail, the policy will change, or the industry. Industry you're in is no longer profitable, or when you're replaced by another host. Other e-commerce owners say that the once lucrative skincare business is no longer doing well. The woman in the video has been in the skincare e-commerce business for 10 years in Yiwu, Zhejiang Province. She said helplessly that she wanted to quit in 2023, but because she didn't know what else to do, she got another batch of merchandise and spent more than 27 million 560 thousand on them. Since March, she has been losing money, and at the beginning of April, she began to clear the inventory in the hopes of clearing it once and for all. She had five products in total. She contacted the people to take over the inventory. Many of the products have already been taken away, and there is only one product left that no one wants. After the warehouse was emptied, she calculated a total loss of about twenty thousand six hundred and seventy dollars. This man does e-commerce supply chain integration. He advised newbies not to do e-commerce as the chance of failing is too high, 95% more so than doing takeout delivery. After failing, the equipment one is invested in won't be worth a penny. Some industry insiders pointed out that previously, when manufacturers supplied goods to the business, prices and profits were decent. But now the situation is completely different. Manufacturers either open their own stores to sell or are forced to lower their prices by sellers. The supply chain and merchants are having a hard time, especially after the launch of Pin Duo Duo, a shopping platform that claims to have the lowest online prices. Everyone has been forced to sell at rock bottom prices, and the entire supply chain seems to have regressed by a decade. Chinese media reported that Pin Duo Duo, which is known for its low prices and fake products, has seen its business grow in recent years. However, several Pin Duo Duo merchants have complained online that the platform's low prices have made it difficult for them to make a profit. Now, various e-commerce platforms are competing fiercely. Everyone wants to remove the middlemen to make more profits. Factories want to sell directly, but it doesn't work out. They don't know how to do live streaming, and most live streamers don't know how to run factories. So there has to be a middleman. The reality is that when factories can't sell their goods, they need to hire people to sell them. As a result, middlemen are still needed, and there is nothing wrong with middlemen selling. But the price war means the middlemen can only sell garbage. The more the price war goes on, the more the middlemen sell junk. The more they sell junk, the worse the consumer experience becomes. Against the backdrop of the recession, e-commerce giants such as Jingdong and Taobao have had to engage in price wars to compete for market share. It is worth noting that in late May there were also two joint statements from the publishing industry released by eight publishing houses in Beijing and the Shanghai Publishing Management Association on behalf of 46 Shanghai publishing units, announcing that they would not participate in the Jingdong Books 618 promotional activities. A publisher's editor complained that Jingdong's book discounts were too aggressive and beyond their means, so several publishers decided to boycott. Publishing is not a profitable business, and it can take years to publish a best-selling book. In the current economic climate, consumers are more likely to cut back on cultural spending, such as reading, which has led to a significant drop in book sales. The editor described the current situation as the pinduoduoization of the entire country, even for cultural products. It has made them feel helpless. It's not just e-commerce that's struggling, but also other businesses on online platforms. Recently, the media reported that CC Talk, a well-known internet education platform, owed its customers eight million two hundred and sixty-eight thousand, and was suspected of running away. In response, CC Talk publicly denied the rumors of running out of business and defaulting on payment. However, a large number of users in the comment section are still trying to recover the money owed to them. Since the second half of 2023, CC Talk's payment cycle has been prolonged, and the problem of users having trouble withdrawing their money has become more and more serious. 
It's reported that in January this year, the platform's payout was late or not there, involving more than 100 tutors, ranging from a few thousand to hundreds of thousands of yuan. Although CC Talk said in its statement that it did not run out of business and that the company's legal personnel, executives, and employees are all working normally at the headquarters in Shanghai, the platform has indeed encountered a shortage of funds, and some organizations and tutors haven't been able to get their payments in time. The company claims that it has designed a variety of payment credit programs for existing clients who are unable to settle their accounts in time and is gradually releasing payments. Some analysts believe that the current problems in China's online economy are largely related to the gradual decline in people's consumption levels. Mainland China's continuing economic decline has led to the rapid disappearance of the once optimistic and confident middle class. Their income has fallen below the annual income line of 13,780, meaning that many have slipped into the lower income bracket. According to Bloomberg data, in the fourth quarter of 2023, China's paychecks fell for the third consecutive quarter, with bonuses falling by an average of 17.5 to 35 percent. The status quo of China's middle class is forcing them to take cost-cutting measures, stay at home, cut expenses, and make more efforts to save. Outsiders believe that this poses a challenge to the CCP authorities. For a long time, the implicit contract between the CCP and the Chinese people has been that the people support the CCP's rule and the CCP brings economic prosperity. Today, it seems increasingly difficult for the CCP to fulfill this promise, leading to the population cutting down on spending. In addition, as the economy deteriorates, many people, both entrepreneurs and workers, have fallen into debt. They have to take out loans to keep their cash flow. Overseas Chinese media reported the story of Ms. Wang, a Beijing resident who used to work as a senior broker in the financial industry. She was retired but forced to work again to pay off her massive debt. Hoping to pay off the debt as soon as possible, she found a high-tech company where she is now learning and may not be able to earn an income in the short term. She said that the self-employed people are having a tough time, especially those who run small stores and work in the service or catering industry. Their lives are getting harder and harder. Mr. Huang from Wenzhou said that working on odd jobs only brings in a few thousand yuan nowadays, and the future is uncertain. Doing business is risky. Many people have lost money and are saddled with heavy debt. The debt goes as high as hundreds of thousands, tens of millions, or even hundreds of millions of yuan. They borrowed the money but lost it in their business ventures. Nowadays, many people are unemployed and can't find jobs. They have to borrow to make ends meet, relying on credit cards to meet their daily expenses. Living on credit and overdue mortgages and other loans has become common. Mr. Chen, a supermarket owner in Suzhou, said that to maintain a good credit record, many people would come to his store for cash advances to pay off their credit cards and then borrow again. This is because they need the cash to make the payment and then take the money out of their credit card and use it again. If they have a credit card with a limit of tens of thousands of yuan, Mr. Chen can make an advance and charge them a fee.